In this segment, we'll be having our guest of the week, who is a visual artist that creates sculptures, paintings, prints, and other hats using something very unique. Well, you want to know how unique it is? She uses human hair, hair that she gets from people of the African diaspora. She's Adebumi Badebo. I'm so happy you're here with us. Thank you. I'm very happy and honored to be here as Good well. morning. <laughs> Good morning. So tell me, why hair? What informed the choice? You could be using any other material. Why hair? Yeah, well, um, back in America, I studied fine arts in art school. And my experience, like a lot of art students, um, you go into these art history classes and you're constantly learning about the master, the white male European mm -hmm. that has made this huge impact through art, through painting. And I was getting very frustrated with um, feeling like I wasn't seeing myself reflected in that history as either the subject who was worthy enough to be painted or the master. Um, and since this history was told through the material of painting, mm -hmm. um, the first thing I did was kind of reject that history okay. and reject its material painting and any traditional material that I felt was connected to this Eurocentric history. Okay. Um, so here became a way of kind of rooting my work in a different history. You know, our hair is DNA. Mm -hmm. It carries our history. Um, I could take a strand of my hair and it will it will give me, it will let me know like I am from Nigeria mm -hmm. and I have families from Sierra Leone so, so, so. and Ghana, all these places. Um, I want to believe you must have taken time to decide, oh, I'm rejecting this Afrocentric history, but what else do I use? Okay, let me use hair. Did it come easily like that? Or how, how long did it take for you to reach, or did you try other things and then decide mm -hmm. hair would be it? Yeah, well, all my life I've been making art um, and I've always been an experimental with material. Mm -hmm. So I think that made it kind of easy to do something so left field. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking a lot um, about my relationship to standards of beauty mm -hmm. and how I have in my personal history kind of acted out this um, how I see beauty. And when mm -hmm. I think about like having my hair braided as a little kid, and then the first time I got my hair straightened. You know, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And then I got my hair permed, and then I wore weaves, and then I had an afro, now I have locked hair. Mm -hmm. But um, I've kind of dealt with identity, and the politics of identity, and um, the politics of beauty through my hair. And when you look at um, black people all over the diaspora, whether it's like the black power movement in, a, like in America and what the Afro meant or, um, you know, the different... And even in Nigeria, how women were wearing um, braided hairstyles to represent the kind of, um, like, independence that came mm -hmm. after colonialism and how they acted that out through their hair and just our spiritual connections with our hair. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know why this funny thought just came to my mind. So the first time you tried hair, mm -hmm. whose hair was it? Um, well, for a year, I just collected hair from who? From people. Like <laughs> when I decided hair was my material, mm -hmm. I started putting out calls, like call for hair, on my Instagram, wow. on mm -hmm. my Facebook. I'm um, just asking. I have this idea that hair. you can work <laughs> out of hair if you are willing to donate. Um, but a friend in America um, saw my post and shared it with a friend mm -hmm. who recently cut off her locks. Okay. And it turns out that this person lived really close to me. So I traded her some cucumbers that I was growing <laughs> for some hair. And I had no idea what I was going to do. Wow. I just knew, I was very determined that um, something was going to come from it. Mm -hmm. And I just kept collecting hair, so then I started building relationships with barbershops. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a process. Um, mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, people, like sometimes I'll get this, are you a juju girl? <laughs> <laughs> um, but people, 
are very, I mean, it's a part of their body, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It's the antennas um, of their, you know, of their body. So I would go to a barbershop and I would just talk to them about the research that I've been doing about the history of here, um, specifically before the slave trade Mm -hmm. and after. Um, And those connections between those histories and just talk about like, you know, what I was thinking and some barbershops came on board and I would leave garbage cans with them. Okay. With mm-hmm. bags, they would fill them up. I would come in and, just and take parking. the year. And mm-hmm. it wasn't until the following year that the first work came about. So um, how have people reacted to your hat, knowing that you use human hair? Have there been some people, you know, uncomfortable or something? Have you experienced any challenges? In that aspect um, well I have a, like a rule for myself I'll never ask anyone to give me their hair um, so all the hair I receive is through donations oh, okay. it's someone who has contacted me and said I've cut That's off true. my hair I want it to be made into a work of art so because the relationship starts mm. on that basis usually people are very like honored to have their hair um, worked into some piece and be in the gallery space. So do, do they, is that an identification? Like if I donated my hair at some point <laughs> yeah. and then you're having an exhibition, when I get there, would I be able to say, oh, that's, that's, that's yeah. your hair there, would I know? Yeah. How do you do that? Well, a lot of people, I mean, you know, you know your body. <laughs> so they recognize and, mm. and I think that's really important too, to recognize yourself in the work. Mm. When you look at mu- institutions like museums or galleries um, or art fairs, it's usually people of color who have been excluded from those spaces. Mm-hmm. So not only are you seeing yourself, but it is you. Mm-hmm. I think that's really powerful. So you've been in Ibadra for <laughs> about two weeks now. Yeah. And I understand that you've been going to barber shops. <laughs> you, you have an uncle who has a barber shop, actually. Yeah. And I saw I saw a video on Instagram where he was explaining to his customer that uh, she's collecting hair for. <laughs> <laughs> At the point, the guy said, "Eh, you know, it, it was uh, it was a Nigerian thing. Maybe you didn't pick it up. I did." And he said, "Eh," and the guy said, ah, "You know, often she arts and my one ah, what can you tell my frame? Yeah, you know, that was what he was trying to explain." And I was laughing <laughs> because i i could imagine it. do you know that people who plait their ears when they use combs and and the things that women in nigeria will collect it don't take it away let me have my hair mm-hmm. so i can imagine you, you walking into a barber shop in nigeria and saying you want to pack the hair how has the experience been so far <laughs> well i went to the first time i went to a barber shop i was just there to observe kind of the dynamic of the shop Mm -hmm. you know i've never been in a barber shop in nigeria Mm -hmm. so just to be an observer of that space i think it was really important for me to be someone who entered this space as an observer and not a taker Mm -hmm. at that moment um but then my uncle who i've been staying with my uncle timothy Mm -hmm. he went back and the barber (laughs) did collect hair for me (laughs) to give and then um, you know, the following week, I found out my uncle Benga is a barber. Okay. Um, and yeah, like in the video, he was explaining to the, his customer that I make art from here, and I'm aware that there may be this skepticism. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what are you gonna do with this? <laughs> um, and rightfully so. Um, but I think once people see the work and understand. Um, kind of all the the energy that is going behind you know I've been doing this for the last five years um, that helps kind of ease you know their uh, fears their fears mm-hmm. and um, they're a lot more willing to be a participant of the work so yeah my uncle Benga gave me <laughs> a bag about this thing <laughs> of here that he was collecting to mm-hmm. burn Okay. Um, and um, so I have the hair 
which I'm really excited about because everyone was like, you will not go to Nigeria. <laughs> here it will never happen. What was the craziest experience you had here or back in America with collecting hair? What was the craziest experience? How much resistance did one person put up to say, eh, not my hair? <laughs> yeah, once I went to a barber shop that I had a um, relationship with, okay. or I say partnership with in America, and... Um, you know, I come in and I'm sweeping the <laughs> hair and usually like little, like teenage boys, like they're the ones who are the sweepers. That's okay. usually their first job. Mm -hmm. So it already looks weird that I'm a woman in this space, mm -hmm. not to get my hair cut, obviously. And I'm sweeping the hair and I'm putting it in a bag <laughs> and a Nigerian man was getting his hair cut and he saw me putting the hair in the bag and he's like, eh! <laughs> what are you doing? You know, and he was like, oh "You will God. never be an artist like this in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. It will never happen." Mm. But once I showed him my work, he was like, "Okay, take." Mm. <laughs> um, what does this tell you? I'm okay. sorry. I'm yes. so sorry, Wura. <laughs> what does this tell you of? Um, I don't know about other countries. I don't know about the attachment mm. they have to their hair like that. But what does it tell you of? The Nigerian man, and well, as a whole, the Africans that you've collected hair from, their attachment to their hair. What does this tell you? Um, that there is an understanding of the spiritual power and significance that is in our hair. Mm -hmm. You know, our head, is, our ori, is the seat of our spirit. You know, um, you know, there's even the belief that you know our 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 communication with God comes first through the head, the head. Um, and and I'm happy about that because in my work I'm trying to bring out these histories of of our connection with our hair spiritually um, economically socially um, and I'm also interested in how that kind of attachment to our hair has been altered mm -hmm. when you look at the slave trade that went on in um you know in in the world or um colonialism and how those histories have altered like what does it mean to have your hair cut okay. and it be discarded on the ground to be thrown out mm -hmm. you know like how do we get to that point historically <laughs> um so i'm interested um so if someone doesn't feel comfortable, I am totally... You don't take offense. Yeah, I don't take offense because it shows um, the power they associate with their hair. You know, I live with a, um, with a woman back in America and she support, She gave me my first solo show, Adrian Wheeler, mm -hmm. but she, will, she has never given me her hair. <laughs> and she says, I will never give you my hair. But she supports my practice in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, you know, especially being, you know, I'm Nigerian mm -hmm. through my dad. I'm black American through my mom. Mm -hmm. um, so even my relationship with here, you know, being a black American, how have we through the diaspora, how has our relationship with here changed mm. i'm interested in all that history and discourse okay apart from the challenges that you face while getting hair from people have you faced any other difficulties while making your heart um maybe just the to make the work mm -hmm. you know every single person on this planet has different hair mm -hmm. there is no two hair strands alike so every time i get hair it's like getting a brand new color of paint Mm -hmm. that I've never dealt with before. So because um, everyone's hair is different and it, the hair comes with information, it comes with DNA, mm -hmm. it comes with its own energy. So I have to be really, really present to that um, when I'm making my work and allow me not to, like I can't control the work in a way, mm -hmm. like I am the one making the work but the hair kind of... Um, Just speaks for itself. Yeah, exactly. So the any plans to diversify, go into it, use other stuff, <laughs> apart from hair? Um, I started incorporating indigo 
um, into my work. On my mother's side, I mm -hmm. found out that um, our family was enslaved on an indigo plantation in um, the southern part of North America and South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested in also kind of looking at um, any significance of indigo in like western parts of Africa, um, like spiritual or ritual significance with that, with the color blue, mm. you know, like bodies were traded for blue, mm. you know, people were traded for the color blue, for an indigo plant, I'm interested in that, um, um, so, you know, so color has entered my work. And every time something enters my work, it always has like some historical um, or contextual significance. significance. As we round off, I'd like to know, do you treat the hair? I know some hairs come with lice, some with <laughs> dandruff, some <laughs> with different, I don't want to believe hair comes well packaged. Yeah. You know, so do you do any sort of treatments before you begin to use, or you use it just as it, as, as it yeah, is? Yeah, as needed. Like if it needs to be washed, <laughs> I'll wash it. Um, I always like pick through it. So there's a long process of just gleaning through the hair mm -hmm. and removing debris and stuff. Um, but for the most part, like I don't alter it too much. So if I receive it blonde, it stays blonde because mm -hmm. I want to respect. How that. that how that person um, treated their hair, um, so I don't alter it in that sense. Um, but yeah, if it needs a little clean, <laughs> a little shampoo. <laughs> Of all right, course. all right. It's been amazing talking to you. I definitely glad it all. We wish you all the best Thank as you continue so to much. source for hair and the time you'll be in Nigeria. <laughs> and that nobody, <laughs> that nobody does anything crazy, you know, yeah. when they see you packing their hair. Thank you so much for being <laughs> on the show. Thank you for coming.